Next on BYU Sports Nation, Nick at Night. A big debut in a big game results in a big win for BYU basketball. Nick Emery returning to BYU hoops and his presence was felt immediately. Did he exceed expectations? Plus, BYU ends their three-game slump, but did Jerem and I end our and one slump? Let's go! This is BYU Sports Nation. Brought to you by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now from Studio B, your host, Spencer Linton and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Thursday, December 6th, wherever and however you're connected. Always fantastic to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the Grinch's nemesis, Jason Shepard. Am I, uh, what's, what's the little girl, the who, uh, Mary, not Mary, Cindy, Sa- Cindy Lou who, Cindy Lou who, are you saying I'm Cindy Lou who, no, I am not saying, because that. wouldn't she be the Grinch's nemesis? Have you seen the new Grinch? I have. I don't think she qualifies as the nemesis, right? It'd be more of his annoying neighbor. Yeah. You know who that is, right? <laughs> it is uh, Keenan, Keenan uh, Ivory Thompson. Or no, what's his name? It's not. It's Keenan Thompson. Keenan Thompson. You yeah. just mixed Keenan Thompson and Keenan Ivory Wayans together. This is together. true. This is true. Going back to the '90s <laughs> in Living Color. Love that show. That's right. It's Keenan Thompson. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. Yes, absolutely. So he just did stuff with Studio C. You're that guy. You're the Grinch's <laughs> super happy, positive, <laughs> loving Christmas neighbor. <laughs> Jolly. <laughs> Jason, I don't know if you caught this yesterday. But I made a correlation between your beloved Utah Jazz Mm -hmm. and BYU basketball saying, you know, BYU plays at the home of the Jazz this Mm -hmm. week on Saturday. So maybe they can tie into some of that Jazz karma after the Jazz made a franchise record 23 pointers. And Jeremy and I both said, man, we'd be happy with 10 threes by (laughs) BYU. That would be amazing. What do the Cougars do? Yeah. They go 10-plus from the three-point line. It's jazz week. Well, it's, it's funny that you bring that up because on the radio broadcast like last night, Mark Durant's like, wow, that Kyle Korver trade's really paying off, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Welcome back, Kyle, and welcome back, Nick. How about today's show lineup? BYU basketball assistant Quincy Lewis will join us in 15 minutes. What impressed him the most in last night's BYU win over Utah State? And did either Jeremy or I get a pick right last night in going for two? That's in 30 minutes. And, Jason, it wouldn't be an epic week without an epic guest for BYU women's volleyball. Like where you're going. Haddock Epic joins us as the Cougars prepare to host their regional Sweet 16 matchup against Florida tomorrow. What should we do now, Jason? I say we look at BYU Sports Nation headlines. Okay. That we shall. BYU basketball dominating Utah State 95-80 to last night. The Cougars led by 21 and a half. Yoli Child scored 31 points for a second consecutive game. Nick Emery, of course, returned to action for the Cougars and wasted very little time getting on the board. TJ, watch it pass the timeline. Accelerating is Haas. Sends to Nick. Nick Take pulls, off. fires, scores! Nick Emery! Welcome back. First shot taken, first shot made. And- yeah, welcome back, Nick. <laughs> the Cougars now 6-4 and four on the season. They face the Utah Utes this Saturday as rivalry week continues. Saturday, 2 Eastern, high noon in Salt Lake City at Vivint Smart Home Arena. Jimmer Fredette finished with 16 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists in a 138-101 to 101 Shanghai Sharks loss this morning to the Guangdong Southern Tigers. Kyle Collinsworth had 14 points, 7 rebounds, and a couple of assists. Don't forget a steal as the Raptors 905 beat Iowa 106-88 in the NBA G League last night. The 905 take on Wisconsin tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. They beat the whole state of Iowa? Apparently. That is impressive. Apparently. Fourth-seeded women's volleyball hosts Florida tomorrow in the Sweet 16. Cougars coming off a sweep of Utah in the second round. You can watch the match live on ESPN3 at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. What a performance from BYU basketball last night. And when they needed it most, we hoped that desperation would breed some good results. The return of Nick Emery obviously helping that. BYU beats Utah State, and in Dave Rose's words, 
pick up their best win of the season. Jason, with everything good that happened in that game, what was the most impressive thing that you saw BYU do against Utah State last night? Here's what I love about this question. It is really difficult to narrow it down. And that's a good thing because there were so many impressive things that happened in that win last night. I'm going to go right out of the gate, three-point shooting. 11 threes, a season high, surpassing the previous season high of 10. That changed everything for BYU. That, that is what we, not necessarily 11 threes, but that type of shooting. We know this team has shooters. We know that they're getting the looks they want. It was just a matter of when are they going to start falling. Well, they all fell in one game, certainly. But that, that changed the dynamic of everything. They were momentum-swinging threes. It, it crushed Utah State. Every, they would get close. BYU hit a three and extend the lead. And it, it just changed everything. Not only from a momentum standpoint, but it also changed defensively what Utah State could do. They couldn't, you know, defensively they couldn't – slack off they had to to go out on the perimeter and guard somebody which opened up the paint for Yoli and and the other bigs to be able to do something so the three-point shooting was the most impressive thing for me and and then maybe secondarily just how this team came out from the get-go they were aggressive they, they were the aggressor from the tip that was great to see Craig Smith is a really good basketball coach for Utah State has the Aggies off to a seven and two start he said in his post-game recap last night we knew BYU wasn't going to shoot 28% from the three-point line all season. Unfortunately, it happened to be against <laughs> us when they turned the page. But, yes, BYU has shooters. At some point, the lid was going to come off the basket. But I think it started on the defensive end, Jason. I mean, you see some threes go through. Perhaps that lifts your spirits on defense. But the emphasis after giving up 113 points to Weber State in a loss last Saturday was – Defend, defend, yep. defend. I heard Quincy Lewis during one timeout say, stay with our defense. Stay with our defense. I'm not sure all of the details of that entails, but he kept saying it over and over <laughs> and over again in the timeouts, which to me said, okay, yes. As good as the offense was, the emphasis was on defense last night and the energy that BYU brought defensively, particularly on Utah State star Sam yep. Merrill, was so good, whether it was Jasheer Hardnett on him or Nick Emery on him. McKay I, Cannon. McKay Coach, Cannon Coach started Rose, on him. Coach Rose yes. praised McKay Cannon afterwards on postgame, talking about how impressed he was with what he did against Sam Merrill to start. His game. first start as a BYU Cougar, and it's part of shutting down Sam Merrill. I thought Yoli Childs was also unbelievable, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Yoli Childs, for a second consecutive game, scored 31 points. Listen to his stat line. 11 of 18 shooting in that win over Utah State matched up against a really good, yes. really long player. 6'11 with a wingspan of well over 7 feet. Yoli Childs got it done. Man, the attacking mindset overall from BYU was outstanding last night. We here at BYU Sports Nation had really counted down, literally counted down the days until his return, and Nick Emery did not disappoint. In fact, this is how Emery began his 2018-2019 season. Let the offense come to you and don't worry about it. You go out and play lights-out defense. How about this? No. <laughs> or just pull up for your first three and hit nothing but the bottom of the net. That brings the Marion Center to a thunderous roar, and it's Emery with a steal. Salyas has it stolen back. Now it's Merrill in for a layup. Tried to sell the foul, couldn't do it. Here come the Cougars. Ferocious pace. Harding for three. Got it. So Emery has a three-point shot, a steal, and an assist in about 30 seconds. Welcome back. That was an unbelievable <laughs> performance. For, you know, you wondered when he gets in the game, what's he going to do? That's what he did. That was awesome. So did Nick Emery, did his return exceed your expectations? Uh, yes. First shot, splash. A three, a steal, and an assist in about 30 seconds. Yes. Three for four from distance, four of six overall. BYU had their best shooting night from the three-point line on the night Nick Emery returns. Hmm, that's interesting. He was a spark. He was an emotional lift, which is exactly what we all hoped he would be. 
I am thrilled for Nick. I'm thrilled for his family. I'm thrilled for mostly just his ability to overcome and get back to this situation. I mean, even Dave Rose had to smile himself at halftime when I asked him, what, what did you think about Nick Emery's first half? And he said, well, got that first shot to go in and got that little half smile. And I'm like, yeah, in the, in the middle of an intense game, even, even Dave smiled a little bit because it's a great story. Yeah. Yes, he exceeded expectations 100%. Yeah, he exceeded my expectations without question. And, and to, to a certain degree, I, I wasn't 100% sure what to expect because there's so many variables going into it. I didn't know how many minutes he was going to play. So, therefore, you, you don't know what type of impact he's going to have because you don't know how many minutes he's going to be on the floor. But those questions were answered as we just showed, you know, you, you could see in the first 30 seconds when he checked in. He came out and did not miss a beat. You talk about looking comfortable on the floor. He, as soon as he s- stepped out onto the court, it was like, all right, I'm home. I'm back. And to come out and immediately take the shot, to get it to go down, it just fueled everything. So, yeah, I, it was great to see. I, I loved it. It was a fantastic night, not just for Nick and for his family, but for BYU basketball. That was a, that was a fun night for the BYU basketball program. How is this team different overall with Nick Emery on the floor is my next question, Jason. Well, I mean, it, it, it's an added scorer, it's an added shooter, and it's an added defender. I mean, that, this is a guy that can bring all of those things. N- Nick, and here's the other thing about Nick. He can be just as effective coming off the bench as he can be as a starter. It, he, he's not one of those guys that, that has to be in a certain role to be able to give you some sort of impact. If he's a starter, he's going to give you the same amount of effort that he's going to give you coming off the bench. And I'm not saying he's unique with that. I mean, every, they're, all, they're all going to do that. But he's one of those guys he, he, that is going to bring it 100% as soon as he steps out there. And last night was a perfect example of it. Defensively, you know, Coach Rose has talked about it on, the, on the ball defender in terms of Jasheer and, and Nick. That's, those are guys, that's what they take pride in. Besides the ability to score, he brings some swagger, too. I mean, that's what he brings to this team. You want to know how this team is different with Nick Emery on the floor? We should ask Yoli Childs. Oh, and I did last night. I mean, he's a dude that comes in and brings instant energy. You know, when he's in the game, it's a different crowd because of the plays he makes. You know, he comes out, he plays for for everybody else on the team. He never plays for himself, and it's good to have him. It's a different crowd because of the plays he makes. I think Yoli Childs put it perfectly. The team is better defensively. There was a palpable energy on the floor specifically. It's one thing to, like, excite the crowd, but to raise the energy on the floor for your entire team, wow. And that was there last night. Not only is he a good defender, but when you can raise everybody else around you just because it's been so long and they've stuck by him and they've wanted him to get back, it just brought this natural energy. I think Red Panda's. I, loved it. I think Red Panda's energy was brought up just <laughs> being in that building. You know what I mean? She's like, I feel this. I feel this. I'm going to have an even better performance than I normally do. Without question, BYU is a better shooting team and a better defensive team with Nick Emery available in that lineup, and it couldn't have come at a better time. You get a much needed win over a good Utah State team. And now you go to Salt Lake City to take on the Utes. Our question of the day, what was the most impressive thing you saw in BYU's win over Utah State? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. All right, at ST Williams underscore answers on Twitter. Nick Emery drops a three, then makes a steal and has an assist all within his first 60 seconds on the court. Sparked the team and instilled huge confidence. Hey, let's not shortchange the young man. That was 30 seconds in. <laughs> it's true. Let's not... We need to go back and like stopwatch <laughs> that thing to see how fast all of that transpired. He did that in half that time. <laughs> At Otis underscore Metoka Ami on Twitter. I love these handles. Do you know what that means? Um, something love. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. Somebody translate that for me, please. I speak Korean. Uh, He says, there wasn't a drop of intensity and play when substitutions were made. The BYU bench was fantastic. This is a great take. At one point in the first half, they had outscored the starters 20 to 18 in that 54 point uh, first half. It's amazing and surprising that having just one guy to rely on changed how BYU plays. Hashtag welcome back Emery. Well, and the thing is, 
it, it was understandably an emotional lift. Yes. But this team was on a mission because yes. of what happened against Weber State. Yes. They were challenged defensively, and they rose to the occasion. And that, that's, that was my point in, in looking at this team from the tip. They were the aggressor. They came out with the mindset that we are going to snap this three-game losing streak. They were the aggressors. Yes, from the start. For the first time, admittedly from the Utah State side, this was the first time that Utah State had not been the aggressor in the game that they had played this season. Credit to BYU. Hey, we've been talking about uh, what impressed us the most. Coming up, what impressed the BYU coaches the most in last night's win over Utah State? Uh, Yeah, BYU basketball assistant Quincy Lewis will join us in studio to answer that question and look ahead to the rivalry matchup. The swagger is strong with this one. This is BYU Sports Nation. Star Wars. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU basketball faces Utah Saturday afternoon at Vivint Smart Home Arena as part of the Beehive Classic. You can listen to the game on BYU Radio. I'll have radio pregame at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Tip off with Greg and Mark at 2 Eastern. Live from Studio B, this is your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jason Shepard. You can listen to BYUSN on demand by downloading the BYU Sports Nation podcast. Just watch the show by going to BYUSN.com whenever, wherever, and however you prefer. Our question of the day. What was the most impressive thing you saw in BYU's win over Utah State last night? At Nashto13 on Twitter, or maybe that's a silent J. I don't know. Yogging. The J is silent. <laughs> or it could be Nato. Nato, or yes. <laughs> Nashto, whatever. Sam Merrill, Utah State, could not get past the Great Wall of Emory. Oh, and Red Panda was pretty cool, too. Red Panda is a phenomenon. Be honest. If you were there, you still have that music in your head. It's, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> it's awesome. It is so good. Hashtag BYUSN. Joining us now in Studio B to recap last night's win is BYU basketball assistant coach Quincy Lewis. Quincy, welcome back to uh, Studio B. Hey, good to be here. Yeah, man, after that win, absolutely. Uh, the energy is high. The energy was great last night from your team. Um, just after you had a night to sleep on it and you've been thinking about it this morning, what, uh, what's kind of on your mind this morning in regard to what happened last night? Yeah, I thought we, uh, we came out with great emotion, you know, right out of the gates. And, uh, you know, I, I liked how we played together. I like how we started defensively in the game. And uh, we kind of we kind of set the tone, and uh, I thought McKay Cannon really came out and uh, did a nice job on Sam Merrill to start the game. BYU's defense, I mean, really as a whole, with starting with McKay Cannon and the presence he put on Sam Merrill, it, you think that there would be a lull at some point, but I heard you during one specific timeout say, stay with our defense, and you said it like <laughs> four or five times in a row, and that was repeated in other timeouts as well. What was the overall defensive plan last night? Yeah, really, you know, we look, look back from the, the game before, and we just really got stretched out against Weaver State, and we lost our principals, and everybody got a little bit nervous and uh, kind of started worrying about their guy too much. And uh, for us, you know, defensively, we really have to play as one. We have to play together, and we have to stick to where our principals are. And we felt like at a little stretch in that Utah State game, we started pulling apart again, and we just had to bring it back together. Utah State coming in was playing really good basketball. They were seven and one, and and really a really confident team. You guys pretty much had the lead from the start. How did you, or what was the team doing that helped you maintain that lead really all night long? Well, I I, I think our guys were upset with what happened a few games before. Number one, and uh, you know, Coach Rose isn't going to allow our guys to you know, have that kind of a game again, you know, honestly. And uh, so we came out and we were ready to go. And uh, like I said, defensively, we were good. And then, uh, you know, Nick gave us a nice boost off the bench. You saw Nick come in and what a first 30-ish seconds. I mean, he gets a good look coming off uh, for a three, knocks it down, then has a steal about five seconds later and then (laughs) has an assist to Connor Harding on the break. And I just thought, Really? Is this real? You can't make this stuff up. What did you think of Nick's debut overall? You know what? It was it was, it was great to see. You know, and uh, especially for that kid, and and really for me, knowing a lot of what he went through in this last year to see him come out like that was just it was just fantastic. You know, and uh, so happy for him. 
really happy for our team and and really good to see uh, so many contributors on the floor. You know, I mean, Connor Harding came in, did a great job, and I think Dalton Nixon's effort sometimes gets lost in the shuffle, as does McKay Cannons, and both those guys were fantastic too. We were talking in our last segment about how we think the team is different with Emory on the floor. How would you answer that question? How is this team different with Nick back? You know, one thing that Nick gives you is, you know, he just gives you a little swagger. He gives you a little swagger on the floor. And uh, I think it loosens everybody up, and uh, it's just a, it's a confidence thing. And obviously he gives you three-point shooting. I think he's a very underrated defender on the ball, and he also sees the floor very well uh, offensively. He can, he can make plays. Yeah, it's interesting when a player can do that for a team because as I talk to some of the other guys, the collective idea is we just feel better when he's on the floor. Like we feel like everything's going to be okay when he's on the floor. And I don't know when that happened or how, how that happens, but how, how would you explain that phenomenon? You know, I think it just takes a little bit of pressure off uh, maybe some people like Yoli or TJ or Jasheer, you know, to know that there's a, a guy who can make a play like that that's that's out there and – you know, little by little, Nick has been, you know, we've been kind of interjecting him in practice with these guys. And so it's it's not easy just to kind of move him into, you know, that rotation, but uh, worked pretty well last night. People certainly are aware, you see the stat line of what TJ is doing, but I'm not sure people realize just how good of a year he's had overall. He's playing some really good basketball. He, he really is. And, uh, you know, I feel like overall TJ is really doing a good job defensively too. I mean, and last night he takes two charges and it's funny. I see him in the locker room after and he goes, coach, I took two charges. I go, yeah, that's the first time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, man, may, maybe, maybe once, you know, before then, but, uh, but teach, uh, it helps, you know, I mean, TJ is, he's an active guy and you know, that's been good. And, uh, you know, his assist to turnover ratio is what's, what's really impressive. Yoli Childs, back-to-back games with 31 points. Understandably, he's more excited about what happened last night because it ended in a win. What makes him such a difficult matchup for the opponents that you face? Well, you know, 31 points, ho-hum. You know, I mean, what's, I mean, what's this guy? I mean, it's just uh, this guy is something else with what he does with his rebounding and his, his scoring, you know, each game. And, and really, they tried to uh, double him in the post last night and made it really tough. And what's really been good about Yoli is he's been able to step away and make passes and get other guys' shots out of that. And, uh, you know, and I felt like uh, the thing I liked best about Yoli, obviously he scored, but the uh, thing I liked best about Yoli last night is I thought he was a more active defender last night for us. With all of the things that worked well last night, what do you, whether it's shooting, defense, whatever the case may be, what do you think is the easiest to translate moving forward? You know, I, I think that uh, we've been waiting for Connor Harding to shoot like that. And uh, that that is not a surprise to me at all. And the guy works really hard. I mean, he's here early in the morning. He stays after practice. That was not a surprise to me. Uh, obviously, with Nick, you're not quite sure what he's going to do in that first game, but great to see him make some shots. And so I think uh, that is something, just overall being able to shoot the ball right there, uh, I think is something that can translate. And really defensively, I think this is something that we need to carry over, you know. BYU a season best 11 for 24 from the three-point line. And uh, I'm sure you understand how it magically works, right? You, you, you know the key to just pulling that lid off the basket, right? <laughs> yeah. I wish I knew that key, you know. <laughs> yeah. So whatever it was last night, you know, we need to get more of that because that's, that's got to be a big part of our offense. And really we've, you know, you know, especially over the last two games, we've been very efficient. But, uh, you know, it would be nice to be able to make that consistent. We can get to Utah specifically in a second, but this week you're in the midst of three straight games against in-state teams. You had Weber State, Utah State, and then Utah Saturday. What do these games against other teams from the state of Utah mean to this program? You know, truthfully, I'd like to say that it's just another game, but it really isn't. You know, I mean, it just means more to you know the fan base, and it means uh, more to the players because they, they know a lot of the players on the other teams and things like that, and you know, the the crowds and things like that. So there is something more to those games. Quincy Lewis with us on BYU Sports Nation, BYU basketball assistant coach. Now you can officially turn your attention to the Utah Utes. So at this juncture, what do you know about them? What kind of problems will they cause BYU basketball, or at least things you need to be aware of? Well, you know, they're always well coached up there. And, uh, 
This is a big physical team. Uh, they have they have length. Uh, they have good talent. They have uh, they're kind of a younger team right now, uh, kind of feeling their way along. But the uh, the younger kids they have are really talented guys. Quincy, it's been fantastic to have you. I don't have you signed our new Sailor Kook flag. You, you have. I you think were the I first. Have. Right? <laughs> Was I the first? Were you the first? <laughs> you must have been one of one of the. I think first. I got on there. I think okay. I got on there. Yeah, yeah, you're on there. Okay, let's give you some BYU Sports yes. Nation karma, the karma for the game against Utah. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Go and distribute that as you uh, see fit. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but congratulations again on uh, a big win over Utah State. All right. Night. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Coming up, has the BYU women's volleyball team taken a moment to actually enjoy what they've accomplished thus far? We'll ask Lindy Haddock Epic when she joins us in Studio B. Um, I think we've done plenty of enjoying, right? <laughs> yeah, we've done we've done our share for everyone. And we will continue yes. with that. Plus, did either Jeremy or I get on the board with our and one picks from BYU and Utah State last night? And speaking of Connor Harding, brought up by the coach, was his performance a big deal or no deal? This is BYU Sports Nation. If you can't watch or listen to BYU Sports Nation live at noon Eastern, fear not, everyone. You can download the podcast on iTunes, TuneIn, or Google Play. You can always enjoy the show on demand. I shan't fear. <laughs> Let's keep it rolling, BYU Sports Nation, with today's headlines. BYU basketball with a dominant 95-80 to win over Utah State last night. Yoli Childs, for a second consecutive game, scored 31 points. He was 11 for 18 shooting last night. Nick Emery also returned to action for the Cougars and got to work very quickly. TJ, watch the pass, the timeline, accelerating his Hawes. Sends to Nick, Nick Take pulls, off. fires, scores! Nick Emery! Welcome back. First shot taken, first shot made. And- I love that it was on an assist from TJ Haas as well as former high school teammate, longtime buddy. And yes, welcome back, Nick. Cougars 6-4 and four on the season, trying to get to win number seven against Utah this Saturday, 2 Eastern, high noon Mountain Time in Salt Lake City at Vivint Smart Home Arena. Jimmer Fernet finished with 16 points and four rebounds plus three assists in a 138-101 to Shanghai Sharks loss this morning to the Guangdong Southern Tigers. Kyle Collinsworth at Big Russia 5 because that's his Twitter handle. Tallied 14 points. Seven rebounds, two assists, and a steal as the Raptors 905 in the NBA G League beat Iowa. The entire, the state, entire state of Iowa. They took on the entire state and won. 106 88 last night. The Raptors 905 will next take on the Wisconsin Herd tomorrow at 8 Eastern. And fourth seeded women's volleyball will be hosting the Florida Gators tomorrow at the Smith Fieldhouse in the Sweet 16. Cougars coming off a sweep of their rival Utah in the second round. You can watch tomorrow's match at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN3. Okay, BYU basketball snaps their three-game losing skid. Jerem Jordan and myself made our and one picks in hopes of Snapping our three-game losing skid of sorts. So it's time for and one. If you're new to the program, here's how it works. We give two picks. The first pick is worth two points. If we get the first one right, then we are able to pick up an extra point with our second pick. Even if you get the second pick right and you don't get the first, zero points. Doesn't matter. They wave it off. It's exactly how it works in basketball. Okay, current standings, (laughs) zero-zero. Enough of that. Jerem's picks. Jason, why yeah. don't you recap what Jerem picked and tell us if you got any of them right. Yeah, I'll just say this. Unlike BYU, you two did not rise to the occasion. <laughs> the two-pointer, the rebounding margin will be single digits. Mm. Wrong. Wrong. Ut- yeah, Utah State out-rebounded BYU 34-24. Oh, he was only one off. And his and one pick. And one. Nick Emery will score 10-plus. Swish! Unfortunately, oh. it doesn't count, though. Because he got the first one wrong. Oh, that's what's brutal. He did it because Nick had 11, so he did get that correct. Is I've gotten the second one right before and been in that very situation. It was situation. a foul on the floor. It was before the shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My picks. My two-pointer. This game will be determined by seven points or less. Mm. BYU was up by 21. They won by 15. But do you think I really care that I got that one wrong. No, you're happy no. to be wrong. No. I don't know BYU if you're happy. You dominated you're... that game. Although when Utah State got it to 10 late, I was like, hmm, maybe they'll hit a three in garbage time, like with under 10 seconds to go, and it'll end in a seven-point game. No, I was not that lucky. BYU wins by 15. And? And one. 
I said Nick Emery's first points will be a three-pointer or a free throw. Swish! Which he did swish on his first three-point take, but it doesn't count. Oh. Wait a minute. You gave multiple ways to score? You, like three point. Hey, it'll either be a three-pointer or a free throw or a layup. No, no. Like, it, there, there, are are several ways, one. there are several ways to score a two-pointer, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, if you go I've over had enough of your lip. If you go over every scenario to score, eventually he's going to be right. <laughs> I just said it would be a three or a free throw. That's very specific. No twos. Could have been a layup. So Could've you give anything. two of the three options out. Great, Jason. Fantastic, Jason. When you have zero points, <laughs> you tend to go conservative. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. That is fair. I will. I will let that slide. <laughs> and guess what? I went conservative with my first pick, and it still didn't work. <laughs> Zeros. I'm excited to figure out when one of us will get something right here. You guys just need to flip it. And the one that you were going to go with yes. and to make yes. it your first. Because, yeah, yeah, maybe that's the thing. Make it uh, a little bit more out there, you know, with one that we don't care as much about, and you might get it right for the first one. Just saying. Okay. Good advice, Jason, for once in your life. <laughs> 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 the Grinch's nemesis. The Grinch's nemesis. I love it. I, find out, I can't remember what that character's name was. <laughs> I'm look it up his, in the break. His annoying Christmas. I'm going to look it up in the break. I'll have, I'll have it after <laughs> the break. By the way, uh, we got some clarification on what Otis underscore Metoka Ami means, that Twitter handle. It's uh, translated to, it's my turn. Ooh. So I was close. I said something love. Amor is love, right? Sure, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Oh, good grief. Let's play Big Deal, No Deal. Big Deal. No Deal. Uh, moving forward, can you call me Mr. Bricklebaum? <laughs> is that his name? That's his name. That is Keenan Thompson's character's name in The Grinch. Mr. Mr. Bricklebaum? Bricklebaum. Yes. Oh, that is a big deal. <laughs> that may end up being the name of this show today. Presented by Delta Airlines, keep climbing. Big deal, no deal, number one. Please tell me it's not Mr. Bricklebaum. <laughs> I got no words. Okay. That's just horrible. I don't know what's worse, Jason asking to be called that or you guys' performances on and one. <laughs> we, if we go for another o, o for on Saturday, we may have to rethink that whole segment. Maybe we should just keep the streak going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, number one, big deal, no deal. BYU gets the quad one win last night against Utah State. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's, it's a big deal for a lot of reasons. BYU needed a win. BYU needed to snap the streak. They did. They got it against a very good basketball team. So, yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal that BYU won the game, but with the quad one modifier in there, I'm going to say no deal because it's unlikely that Utah State's going to finish top 30 in the net rankings at the end of the season. It'll probably be a quad two win for BYU, which, good grief, at this juncture, you take it. You take it. It's a quad one win now, but it's really early. So, no deal in that regard. Big deal that BYU won so convincingly. Sandra Bullock scoffs at your dismissal of the net. Okay? <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Strike two, Jason. Big deal, no deal. Connor Harding going five for six with 14 points in 21 minutes of play last night. Yeah, I'd say it's a big deal. It, it's a career high for him with 14 points. But it, it's just another example of the weapons that BYU has. And when they're all firing – what BYU can accomplish. That's a, that's a big deal. Everybody I talk to about Connor Harding, everybody, their eyes light up as to how good this, this kid can be. So, yeah, I'd say it's a big deal. He reminds me a little bit of Jimmy Balderson and the way that he played. With yeah. His ability yeah. to – I mean, he's a big – he's a physical guard. He can shoot outside. He can, he can get inside. He's got, uh, you know, pretty good lift around the hoop. This is a big deal. BYU's bench overall was a big deal last night. Connor Harding was a huge part of that. Five for six with 14 points. He's a freshman. Yeah. He's a freshman. This is a great sign. It's, it's not deal. just the points. It's the efficiency. Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he's a smart, smart basketball player. Number three. I thought you were going with the Jimmy Chitwood reference there, but you went Balderson. Uh, so. he, he is. When he, he yes. is BYU's Jimmy When he Jimmy started Chitwood. with Jimmy, I thought that's where he was going. I, I was going the same spot. Uh, number three. Big deal, no deal. The WCC being ranked eighth among amongst conferences in NCA hoops right now, according to Ken Palm. Uh, I, We're number eight. I'm going to, I'm going to lead towards no deal. Um, again, because it's early, uh, although I like the trend, I like that 
San Francisco and LMU are both playing yeah. really good basketball. Of course, San- Gonzaga is the number one ranked team in the country. San Diego beat San Diego State last night. San Diego took it to San Diego <laughs> State. They won by 12. So there's that. Yes, the West Coast Conference has some other good teams. They have depth. They have better coaching now, and it's starting to manifest itself now that these coaches have had a little bit of time to implement what they want to do consistently and get some of their recruiting in. So I I like it. I'm not ready to call it a big deal until – this becomes a consistent trend all the way through the end of December and into early January. Yeah, I, I'm with you, too. I say no deal just because it's too early. Hopefully that trend continues and, and maybe even improves. But, but, yeah, right now, no deal. Number three or number four. Where Last are we? one looking ahead, big deal, no deal. BYU having a 60% chance of beating Utah on Saturday, according to Ken Palm. Mm, you go first. I'm going to say no deal because clearly they have an 80% chance of beating Utah. BYU has an 80% chance of beating Utah? 80. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, if you have to explain it, it, it kind of loses its, its charm. My apologies, Jason. Yes, I was a little slow out of the gate there. <laughs> <laughs> no love for Mr. Bricklebaum for his jokes. That's probably a joke Mr. Bricklebaum Mr. would have made. Mr. Bricklebaum. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey, Grinchy. No deal, because it's higher than 60%. Hey, Grinchy. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he calls him Grinchy. Oh, man. man. That's good stuff. Uh, big deal, no deal, what do you say? Um, I'm going to say any, any advantage, yes. I'm going to call it a big deal. BYU's favored to win, and they do. The biggest deal will be if BYU beats Utah and gets to 7-4, and four, and they had back-to-back wins against Utah State and Utah. When that happens. Just win that game. Yes. Uh, keep in mind, you can get your game day apparel for BYU right now at thebyustore.com or in person at the BYU store, including this hoodie that I'm wearing, the full zip BYU football hoodie available right now. That is really nice. And the one thing I did not realize about that, I did not realize that was a full zip. I thought it was just a, a pullover hoodie. Well, they have the hoodie version okay. and they have the full zip. I version love that. That is awesome. With the white strip across yeah. navy blue backdrop. Yeah, Very cool. It's, this is it's listen, it's Christmas season. Things are on sale. Prepare to spend a lot of money and to make people happy at the BYU store. Absolutely. Coming up, speaking of making people happy, BYU hosting Florida tomorrow in the NCAA Regionals in Women's Volleyball. How big of an advantage is home floor for the Cougars? Lindy Haddock Epic, the senior setter, will join us to preview that regional matchup with the Gators. I feel something epic, Jason. Ooh, I like that. Wordplay on the name. Yeah. Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Check out BYU Sports Nation right now with Kiki Solano. She's got the latest deets. Yeah, I said it. Deal with it in Cougar Sports with a social media twist. Watch it on the BYU Sports Nation Facebook, IGTV, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. Everybody loves the deets. The deets. With Mr. Bricklebaum. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Sports <laughs> Nation with our question of the day. What was the most impressive thing you saw in BYU basketball's win over Utah State at the Brentar 14 answers on Twitter? Defense. Sam Merrill never got comfortable. I give Emery a lot of credit for that. Also, anytime Utah State found something that seemed to work for a couple of baskets, BYU found a way to stop it, and it didn't work for USU anymore. Big difference from the Weber State game. Hashtag BYUSN. And again, another shout-out to McKay Cannon yeah. for what he did to slow down Sam Merrill out of the gate. Sam Merrill had four points at halftime. BYU was up by 21. Uh, there's a correlation there for sure. Joining us now in Studio B to preview BYU women's volleyball and their Sweet 16 regional matchup against the Florida Gators in the Smithfield House's Lindy Haddock Epic Senior Center. Lindy, welcome back to the show. Thank you. How would you describe your senior year thus far? Yeah, it's been incredible. Um, I've never been a part of a team that's so dialed in and so focused on our goals. And so it just feels like it's magic out there and it's awesome to be a part of. Your sister, Lacey, played a a more prominent role in the win versus Utah. Uh, What did you think of her performance utilizing the BYU Sports Nation karma? (laughs) It's all of you guys. (laughs) Um, 
Yeah, Lacey's just been such a good all-around player this year for us, and she's played different roles as an outside hitter, as a right side, and even as a DS. And so I'm just so happy for her that she's being able to succeed in whatever position the coaches put her in, and she's really been all about the team the whole year. So it's been Perhaps awesome. you've already answered this question because you talked about how dialed in this team is, but what makes this group of seniors unique? Um, honestly, like if you look at all of our – the seniors, none of us came into BYU just starting and playing right off the bat. We, a lot of us had to just, or all of us had to, from day one, we had to show who we were and um, that we belonged on the court. And so I think, I think that's awesome that all of us, it took some time for us to find our roles and on the team and we've been able to, to do that earn well. those spots. Yeah. Well, and, and you've told me in the past just how close this group of seniors, you guys are really tight how much do you think that's played a role this year for the success of the team? Yeah, it's all about chemistry on the court. And if you can't learn to to go with your teammates and to mesh with them, you're not going to be as good as you want to be. And so I think that's really attributed to our success is how close we are, how much we trust each other. And when you have trust on <clears throat> when you have trust on a team, it makes you that much better. Lindy Haddock Epic, senior setter for BYU Women's Volleyball with us on BYU Sports Nation. And I want to talk about your position specifically and how many split second decisions you have to make in the moment. It's crazy when it comes to distributing the ball. Mm-hmm. If you want to go with the quick set in the middle, you want to push it all the way outside. You have your opposite. You want to go to the bick with Ronnie coming out of the back off the three meter line. <laughs> like do you have a plan going in of like, okay, I want to do this and then this and then this, or is it all in the moment? Yeah, I, it's definitely a plan going into the game. I think um, the coaches do a really good job of telling me where the ball should be placed each play, and and they give it, they leave it up to me as my decision. But going in, we know who they want to block, where their defense is going to be, so that makes it easier in those split second decisions, knowing where to set the ball. What do you know at this point about the Florida Gators? Uh, we know they're big, they're physical, they um, run a good offense, and so I think that's going to match up well with our offense and our defense. You know what I just realized too, by the way, with it being the Florida Gators. You know, at the end of the Saturday, oh, end of the match, the Gator, this is the Gator ha- Clap. They're going to think it's for them. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to think it's a Florida Gators. Yeah, they're going to be confused. Like, it'll what? be a weird turn. Like, what no, no, is no. going on here? I don't <laughs> quite. Why are they? Why are they excited <laughs> for us? <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of, of the atmosphere at the Smith Fieldhouse, well, what kind of atmosphere do you anticipate? I mean, you guys. You guys know how loud it can be, but now you're in a Sweet 16 and you're hosting it. What do you expect from that? I think it's going to be rocking in there. I'm excited to – it's always fun to play it with a crowd like that, and I'm sure more people are going to come this time. We've never hosted a Sweet 16 before, and so I think it's just brought the community more invested into it, and so I'm excited for what the fans will bring and the energy they'll bring. Yeah, in 1986, BYU was also ranked number one. you got to go all the way back to then, the last time the Cougars were atop the polls. But the tournament wasn't expanded the way it is now. There were less teams involved, and so BYU hosted a regional. But this just feels differently because there are more teams. I mean, there are 330, maybe even more than that, Division I women's volleyball teams. Um, you were ranked number one for 11 weeks. You did enough to earn the right to host a regional in this expanded format. Uh, what do you think about the accomplishment of the consistency that you have brought this season? Um, yeah, I think it started from years before in the culture that Heather's made this team. And um, it's just incredible how much work she's done in the four years that she's been coached, that she's built this culture up, that we're able to play and they're putting schedules together where we're playing good teams where we're being able to be ranked this high and so I think just a tribute to the coaches and how well they've built the culture and how well they've scheduled each season out to be when do you think this team will get a chance to actually sit back and appreciate what you guys have and you know do you allow yourself a chance to kind of appreciate everything that's gone so well so far, or is it we're not going to worry about it until the season's over and hopefully it's not over for a while? Um, Well, after conference is over, we had a meeting where we just reflected on how well we did in conference and our favorite memories and moments. And so I think that was a good way to just close out that regular season and then just have a start a new 
new chapter, new memories in this postseason. Mm-hmm. And so I think we did take a moment there, but still have a lot more we want to do. And ask me that again in two weeks, and I'll, <laughs> <tell you. laughs> I'll let you know. Okay, we'll finish with this. To date, what's been the most challenging part of this season? Challenging. I just think the adversity that this team has gone through this year, having to do with injuries and other matters, and I think we've really um, rallied together and we're we're better we're better now because of it. We're better people. We've um, we're not taking anything for granted, and yeah, I just think just learning how to problem solve from different adversity that we've gone through. Lindy, I'm going to give you an extra heap of uh, the BYU Sports Nation karma. Oh, I'm just as much as we can muster up yes. from our seats here in Studio B. Take it, enjoy it, uh, have a fantastic match tomorrow night against Florida, and uh, congratulations and good luck. Thank you so much. Hey, have you signed our flag, our new flag? Your sister has. Yes. L- Lacey signed it. Oh, no, I'm right there. I signed it. Oh, oh you did. We're, we're I was over say, two. Yeah. I know. We both, uh, both of our guests today, we thought, still needed to sign it. That's right. You were early on. Okay, that's right. You're down here. Lacey was there. Very good. Of course, she signed her name bigger when she saw yours, Lindy. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. <laughs> Congratulations again, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Perfect. Thank Thanks, Lindy. Guys. Coming up, Jimmer news in the Cougar Whip Around. Ah, uh, yes, the Jimmer. And our elite voice of the day, what impressed you the most in last night's win for BYU basketball against Utah State? This is BYU Sports Nation. Shout out to today's guest, BYU basketball assistant coach Quincy Lewis and senior setter of BYU women's volleyball, Lindy Haddock Epic. If you missed any of the show, download the podcast. Go to BYUSN.com to watch full episodes. Big fans of one Dennis Pitta. Let's whip it. It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Men's basketball dominated Utah State 95 to 80 last night. Yoli Child scored 31 points for his second straight game. Nick Emery returned to action for the Cougars. Wasted no time getting on the board. Nick Emery with 11 points. BYU back in action Saturday against Utah in Salt Lake City, 2 p.m. Eastern time on BYU Radio. Jimmer, I believe it's Yoeli, Jason. Hmm. Jimmer Fredette finished with 16 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists in a 138-101 Shanghai Sharks loss this morning to the Guangdong Southern Tigers. Cougars overseas. Kyle Collinsworth tallied 14 points, 7 rebounds. He's it's Canada. It's Canada. It's over, <laughs> maybe over a lake. Okay. I don't know. Uh, 14 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, and a steal as the Raptors 905 beat the state of Iowa 106-88. <laughs> The Raptors next take on the Wisconsin Herd tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Volleyball. Fourth-seeded BYU women's volleyball hosting the Florida Gators tomorrow in a regional. Sweet 16 matchup. The Cougars fresh off a sweep of Utah in the second round. Now it's time to become elite and get to the Elite Eight. You can watch the match live on ESPN3 from the Smith Fieldhouse, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Today's rise and shout goes to Nick Emery. Yeah. And his entire family and the BYU basketball family. Just what a storyline that developed last night. Great to have him back. Hey, what do you think about tomorrow's show? Having like a little play on words with Sweet 16, having our uh, Sweet 16 party here? Oh, you want to have a Sweet 16 party in studio? I'm just saying. Maybe. (laughs) I'm not part of the show tomorrow. Is MTV funding it? (laughs) (laughs) I just could wear crowns and stuff. I'm sure Jerem would love that. <laughs> Spuddy's got a crown on, on his throne of potatoes. <laughs> we might as well join him, right? Crown of lies. <laughs> Our question of the day, what was the most impressive thing you saw in BYU's win over Utah State last night? At Racing Coog says, the game was never in question. BYU jumped out to a big lead, led by 21. It got to 10, I think, late in the second half. But I never felt... That weird twinge of, oh, no. No. I, I, no. BYU did the work early, and, and then the game was not in doubt, in my opinion, throughout the rest of the, of the second half. At 86, W.I. Coog says, one, Emery with a basket steal and assist in his first minute on the, on the court. Uh, one and a half, answer, says team defense was also good, and the team can shoot on their home court. Question now is, can they take both of those on the road? Well, look, everything is, can you do it consistently? Last night was great. And that's why I asked Quincy, what's the most, what's the thing that maybe translates the most moving forward? And he talked about the shooting. So talked about shooting in the defense. So we'll, we'll see. 
Gr- great, great game last night, though. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort celebrating 50 years from at Royal Coog. I'll add that was the most impressive and hopeful moment to be a BYU Hoops fan this year. After a roller coaster football season and a sluggish start to basketball, Nick Emery gave reason to believe BYU can be legit. Thanks, Nick. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, uh, a.k.a. Who? Oh, yeah. Bricklebomb. Mr. Bricklebomb. Hey, Grinchy. <laughs> I am Spencer Clifton. <laughs> Shout out to Jared Jensen. You know you love him. Hey, Richie. Help us hook that up, right? Probably. Go Cougs.